Hey, 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 welcome into another episode of Halos in the Infield, the podcast. I'm flying solo tonight uh, as we are getting closer and closer to spring training baseball. We know a few teams start tomorrow, which is if you're watching right now, this is the morning time we're debuting this. But as of right now, it's a Wednesday night. So you have a couple teams starting tomorrow. So today, when this airs is when spring training will officially kick off. Are you ready? Do you feel it? Are you pumped? Are you not? That is going to be the question for tonight's show. Well, one of the many questions. We're also going to get into the spring training roster. The people, we're going to go through the names and maybe uh, draw a few out of the hat that will appeal to me. And uh, let's see if you agree in the comments. And uh, let me know who you who you think is going to be a breakout player for the Cactus League is because come on, baby, three Pete Cactus League champions were the two time champions back to back. Let's make it three years in a row and we'll see who's going to break out. We're going to and then obviously as a regular season comes, we're going to have a few panels, a few podcasters on to join us and then also just talk about our feelings and thoughts moving into the regular season. But before we even get to that, there's still a few dominoes that haven't fallen yet. You know, we've got a bunch of Boris guys who are impact players, say what you may about them, your Blake Snails, your Chapmans, uh, there, there's a few other pitchers out there that, uh, you know, haven't signed yet. And right now, the, the if you're looking at the Angels, you heard Mike Trout, you heard Devers in Boston, they're both clamoring for a couple players to come and make, you know, real big difference. In St. Louis, Arenado is the same thing. There's some players that if the Angels were to add a couple pitchers right now, I, you know, despite having a five man rotation, we'll talk about that, you know, would make a huge difference. If you were to add a couple of bats, that would make a huge difference. But what we're going to focus on with that being said and not being out of the way, I know I'm all over the place right now, but I wanted to just get those few things out because we're going to really focus on today's show talking about the roster who's on it right now, Ron Washington's projected lineup. And we'll, like I said, talk about sleepers for the for the regular season and into spring training. And because, uh, you know, you can't take too much out of spring training. I've always said, you know, as long as guys stay healthy, they're not getting clobbered up there. They're not striking out a lot. You can you can get through with a subpar, you know, spring training. You don't need guys to be batting 400 with 45 home runs. That's not the time to do it for me. I like to see these guys just have a healthy spring, work on their hitting, make contact. The power will come to the power hitters. The the hits and walks will come to the other kind of hitters, the slap the ball hitters, and so on and so on. So we have a, you know, again, with what and, and why I brought up Boris and stuff like that, with those players being out there, it's sort of like they're dangling them in front of us and we can't do nothing about it. We have to ask our poppy, Uncle Artie, if he's okay with spending a little bit of money. And what bothers me is that he's shown no inclination, especially with the players that he's took in the Boston route. Boston has done the same thing. Their fan base is pissed off. They haven't added anybody. The Angels are really, they really haven't added anybody. If you think about it, a, a lot of C-list guys, if you want to call them that, a lot of proclamation projects that somehow got to turn their careers around here with the Halos. You know, we saw last week our boy Moustakis, leader in the clubhouse for 2023, signed with the Chicago White Sox. Just today, uh, Gio Urshela, you mean to tell me as an Angels fan, <clears throat> as even some of the most iconic, uh, you know, or, or – um, the the most uh, hypocritical Angel fans as far as being arty kiss assers and boot licking housemen like Roger Lodge can't come out there and justify the fact that we didn't even offer this dude or Shella a contract. You know, he played really hard for us, was a very good all around hitter. We paid, what, $10 million for him on a one year contract. He only got 1.5 from the Tigers. And he's going to see a lot of playing time and he'll probably get a lot of hits. And I hope when he comes to Anaheim Stadium, you and myself, We'll give him a nice little uh, golf clap because he sure as hell deserves it, especially when Mustakas comes back too. I love those two guys. I'm really going to miss those two guys. I think the Angels miss the boat. Sometimes you don't like to see the Angels pick up players or bring them back because maybe they just had that one good year. But you had a feeling with both these guys, they're going to have solid seasons. They're going to get playing time. They're both on bad teams. 
So they're going to get playing time. And they would have got playing time here because let's, let's face it, the Angels aren't a good team. So with all that being said, a lot of players still – can fall into the Angels' lap as we get moving. Solaire signed with the Giants last week, three-year, $45 million contract, a guy who was hitting 34, 40 home runs a year, uh, a World Series MVP with the Braves, should have been a guy to get a fat contract, but the market didn't dictate it. Artie Moreno, $50 million under the cap, can afford two or three Boris guys if he wants right now because they're going to take lower contracts with it being so close to the regular season. You, do you think for a moment these guys want to wait to the last minute or start getting into spring training, actually seeing Major League Baseball uh, for, you know, uh, fastballs for the first time in a while, at least from a Major League pitcher in game uh, play at the end of spring and then get into the regular season? No, they're, if they sign at the end of spring training, chances are they're going to miss most of April just getting ready, having to tune up in the minors. That's not what these veterans want. They were expecting a big contract and haven't gotten it. Don't have a destination. Don't know where to take the kids to school. So all that needs to be settled. Uh, and, and, it, and again, the Angels could wind up with one or two of these players, which I would love, and they would make a huge difference. So as we start in that, let's look at the overall roster for the Angels. I have it pulled up over here. And this is what you've got going into spring training. This is what uh, is projected uh, as far as left field. Let's start with left field first. It's, it'll be Taylor Ward and Joe Adele. Who would you start over those two? Most people would say Taylor Ward. And I would have to agree. Uh, Mike M Mike Trout or Mickey Moniak. Obviously, you're going to go with Trouty Fish over there in center field. But I would say, you know, since we don't have Shohei Otani, obviously, uh, you know, Trout, I would like to see him DH, you know, at least once or twice a week, save some wear and tear. Uh, Mickey Moniak is projected starter in right field. Aaron Hicks uh, would be in there. I would use Hicks only when Trout is DHing. Then you go over here to the projected uh, infield positions and you have Louis Renifo and Anthony Rendon at third. I like how they have Renifo ahead of uh, Anthony Rondon as far as on the depth chart right here because, yeah, can't trust him. For some reason, we have Kyrene Paris at shortstop as your only uh, shortstop. I don't think that actually is, is correct at all. Brandon Drury is obviously your second base. Louis Renifo is a good backup. And you also have Drury listed at first base. That's for your defense. Uh, <clears throat> Logan Ohapi and, dude, Matt Theis behind the plate. Uh, your projected starting rotation if we were on a six-man, but again, Ron Washington is old school. He's going to go with a five-man, but they have six starters listed. And these six starters are obviously, I believe, going to make the team because either they don't have the options or this is uh, what they need. And I think Suarez is your guy that's the man out right here. What They got Reed Deadmears as your number one right now. Uh, Griffin Canning, uh, too, uh, but see – what I would say is I would go like this. I would actually give it to Patrick. Let's see what Patrick can do at the number one spot. And then I would move, like I would do an old school Chuck Finley, Mark Langston. I would go Sandoval, Detmers, and then you'd mix it up with either Canning or Silseth, whoever has a better spring and looks to have better live. Like, like Canning has the stuff he had last season. I definitely say Canning would be your third because his fastball had great movement. His curveballs and changeups were were moving all over the place, but staying in the zone, he wasn't walking. Guys, if he stays healthy, he's a solid three. Uh, if not, you move Silseth in there because Silseth came on strong too. So you can uh, switch three four and then maybe go Tyler Anderson or go Tyler Anderson four and then Silseth five. So you could flip it back to a lefty and not have three lefties in a row once you flip the rotation again. And then Suarez, I would say, would have to be your Jaime Biera and run him as, as a long man, which is scary. Trust me, uh, especially if you know, hopefully – see, with this staff, I don't think he'll be tipping pitches, but it's still scary because, again, I, I don't really trust him until he proves us otherwise. I would love for him to bounce back, but we'll have to see. Now you look at the relievers, and we'll get into that in a minute here. Obviously, Estevez will be your closer. They have projected more Stevenson, Soriano, Cisnero, and Garcia, but I think that's going to change. So let's get into those pitchers right now. You also have a combination of Sam Bachman, who could be a slash. I mean, they want to use him as a reliever, but there's always that little, that little 
phase that the Angels tried to do last year, which is kind of start him as well, work him out, uh, st- uh, you know, lengthen him out to get some innings. So Bachman could be a wild card depending on how the bullpen goes. So keep an eye on him. You also have Adam Clymer. Uh, who came over from or Klimbert, whatever you want to say, uh, from Toronto. He's a solid pitcher right there. You got Jose Cisnero, like I said, uh, came in from Tampa, was pretty good last year. Uh, other invitees, you got uh, Davis uh, Daniel, who uh, is, is fighting for a starting spot or a, which I don't think you'll get, but a long man spot as well. Uh, Luis Garcia obviously came over from the Twins. Uh, Jimmy Herget is a guy that, again, he had a bad season. You want him to bounce back. Uh, we'll have to just see if he does or not. You got Ben Joyce, who should make the, the bullpen. Uh, I, I'm almost assured he will. Jack Konkowitz, uh is a wild card. He's 23 years old, came over from the, I believe, the Twins organization as well. Minor league guy, but he'll be in camp. Victor Medros as well. I'm slaughtering some of these names. Matt Moore, again, uh, back with the Angels. I'm happy to see that. Uh, uh, Zach Plesak, uh, which is that project that the Angels picked up. He's going to be stretching out for a starting spot. Uh, again, that fifth spot is not in set in stone, but it will be a spot that two or three pitchers are going to give a shot at. And I trust Ron Washington's choice with who he wants to go with. Do you go with another righty or do you take a shot with a lefty? Uh, or or Because uh, <clears throat> I don't think he'll have four lefties. Because you got to you got to imagine, barring injury, Reed Detmers, Patrick Sandoval, and Tyler Anderson are just penciled in. They're penciled in. And I think Griffin Canning at this point, unless an injury, he's penciled in. I think it really comes down to Chase Silseth. It's his job to lose, I believe. And there's a couple guys knocking on the door. Uh, Jose Quijada will be back in a couple months. Uh, He's on the 60-day IL. But uh, look for him to come back around the All-Star break because he's got to get some gameplay in. So he'll hit double A, triple A, all that good stuff. Kenny Rosenberg's always on the cusp, but not really there. He's more of a fill-in if a guy gets hurt. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much stock in him. I like Jose Soriano coming back this season because of, you know, um, you know how good he pitched last year. I think at times he was underused and at times he was overused. The bullpen was a mess last year, ne- thanks to Numb Nuts Nevin. Robert Stevenson will be a nice addition. Um, he's coming in. Uh, he's back home in California from Tampa Bay. He's, he'll be uh, providing some relief as well. And then you got Suarez. You got Wants and Zunga are your guys who are coming in for spring training. Uh, Wants has got to have a back uh, bounce back season as well. Uh, your catchers are still set in stone with the same. Uh, Logan Ohapi, Matt Thice. Uh, let's see. I already gave you the the guys that got so far um, – you got Stefanik and Soto uh, and uh, Shanowell, who or Shamwell. Uh, I went through those players real quick. And then we'll check out here, which is Ron Washington's lineup. And let's see if you agree, because I'm going to go through this lineup real quick. And he's projected the not because, again, this is a guy that Randy, he goes crazy over as far as the last couple of years. Not Ron Washington, but the fact that the Angels have just had and, and we, we have too. Just been crazy over the fact that it's a different lineup every night. You can't have any consistency. Randy harped on it. I harped on it. Fernando harped on it. And it seemed like every fan could tell that it was just stupid the way we were running things the last two, three years. But finally, it looks like we have a manager in there that's going to grab this team by the balls, and it's his way or the highway. And if you're given a projected lineup, which we haven't seen anything like this since Sosha, I'm all for it. It's like Fernando says, change is good, change is better. Uh, so what we got so far is he says, Renifo or Moniac, sort of a platoon up there at number one. I kind of like that in a way because when Renifo's hot, he takes a lot of pitches, works, walks, and then it also when the pitchers get tired of walking him, they tend to leave him a cookie out over the plate, and he tends to either hit it to the gap or over the fence. So I do like Ronifo at that number one. And when Moniac's good, when he's not swinging for the fences, which will be interesting this year to see if they fix their swings and they're not all about the home run. If they're going for just putting the bat on the ball, I do like Moniac at number one. Now, going here's the thing though Ronifo has more power from the left side, and, and obviously Moniac's a left handed hitter. Uh, with a left handed pitcher, I'm not putting Moniac at number one. 
I'm I'm going to stick with Renifo and, and move him around, and he could be the number one guy and be that switch hitter up front. So that'd be like a day off for Moniak. I would I would give him an every now and then more opportunities than he got with Num Nuts Nevin to hit lefties, but I wouldn't it, he wouldn't be my first choice. Or if I'm going to play him versus a lefty, I'd bat him around seventh. Now there's a couple of things that kind of got me about this lineup in a bad way. Okay. I do like Shamwell at and Shanowell at second. I really do. But I think look, I know we're trying to push him to be the next Darren Erstad. I really do. And I hope he does. Now, defensively, does he look like Darren Erstad? Hell no. He's got a lot of work to do to live up to the first basemen that have put on an angel uniform your Wally Joiners, your Darren Erstads, and so on and so on who have played over there. You can even throw Albert Pujols because he was pretty uh, pretty good at first base as well. Shan- Shanowell, you know, he's he's shown, a, you know, everyone talks crap about Stefanik as far as the defensive liability. I think Shanowell's shown that he's been a real bad defensive liability at first base. He made a couple errors at a game I went to last year that cost us the game. Had he not made those errors, they win straight up. So, I, but I do love his at bat. I mean, you can't take his bat out of the lineup. And it, and I love the fact that shithead Madden and numb nuts Nevin are gone because the obsession with the analytics, whether it was forced on them or they did it themselves, because in the end, they got to fill out that, that scorecard either way. The obsession of putting Trout and Otani, guys who are 3-4, always in the tube, pissed me off. And the fact that we have now a guy like an Erstad wannabe, hopefully, at a number two who can set up a Mike Trout and give Trout RBI chances instead of Captain Solo hitting the home run with nobody on. I trust if Moniac's right that he'll get on base and maybe Shannon will move him over and Trout can either hit a gapper a single or a home run to drive him in. Or I trust that Renifo can work a walk and Shanowell can get first and third and Trout can hit a sacrifice or a three-run homer. That's what I like to see. And I I believe that Shamwow is not going to have a sophomore slump. I think this dude is really going to come alive this season. He ended the year with a big-ass streak about getting on base. He has a chance to break the Angels' all-time record. He's he's on fire, and I do believe he's going to start the season really good. A guy's Look, guy hit 650 in college. Everyone's like, oh, he's 650 in college. Blah, blah, blah. He, that's college. What did he do in the minor leagues? How f- I mean, dude didn't even last one year in the minor league system. That's how good this kid is. He's got an eye. Yes, we know he doesn't have the defense yet. But I, I, there's something about him batting second I love. And when we talk about the Moniac lefty comparisons and say, hey, man, I don't feel good with him as a lefty, I feel good with – or facing a lefty. I, I feel good with Shamwell facing a lefty as I do with him facing a righty. So I, I like that a lot. I really do. And I think for the most part uh, – I think for the most part – when you have Trout hitting a uh, third, you're going to have your RBI chances. And it might not, you know, if he stays healthy, it might be one of these seasons where we haven't seen Mike Trout hit 100 RBIs in a while. And he might just do that this season. If he stays healthy, we may see a 35 home run, 100 RBI season from Mike Trout, 280 average. That's what we want. Now, the part where I start to fall off with this lineup is <laughs> Ron Washington. I know that, you know, you may not have caught in the or wind of what our man, you know, Anthony Ass Rendon said in his introductory, uh, you know, press conference with Sam Blum and others who actually cared about Tempe, Arizona. And he came out with some smug remarks about not caring about baseball. Now, I know he came in there with an apple for the teacher, Ron Washington, and he was taking fielding practice, first player to be there for spring training. Unbelievable. But in the end, it's just a job to him. And we're going to put this guy at number four. Now, again, 
some angel pundits will come out and say, well, Todd, look what he did when he was healthy last year. He got on base. The power wasn't there, but he was consistently walking. He was Tony two bags. That's fine. But again, how many games is he going to play? You can't trust the guy. There is too much baggage with this guy already. If I'm Ron Washington, and I think I know Ron Washington with the years I've watched him manage, this lineup looks all pretty and everything on paper and may win you some games on the show in video game status, but I don't think that he's going to be batting four. Whether it's a quarter of the season, whether it's the first off, he's not going to be batting fourth all season. No way, because he won't be healthy all season. Will he be batting fourth uh, 10 or 15 games? Possibly. Past that, I would bet my right nut that he's not going to be batting in that four hole. He he's he does not put the production up unless he goes in the way back machine to 2019 and he wants to play with that God-given talent. He is not going to be batting fourth, but that's where Ron Washington's got. So I don't agree with that, but I will stick up for Ron and say, give him the benefit of the doubt. If Trout is walked and the bases are juiced, Rendon can sacrifice him in. I I have no doubt he can, he can do that because he did make contact and he was leading the team with sacrifice RBIs before the first time he was hurt last year. So I do think he's got it in him to at least provide that offense behind Trout if Trout gets on or if he can't score a run and he moves a guy over, then yeah, I can see that. Again, next guy up, batting fifth, Ward, I don't see it. I don't see it. A lot of people love Ward. A lot of people love Ward. I'm not one of these guys that love his swing. I don't like the his just the moxie he shows. I think this dude should have been traded. That's that's my opinion on it. I could be wrong. You guys could be right. I could be a hater, whatever. I don't like him at five. He's on the team. I'm not saying I don't want him on the team at this particular point, but I would gladly bat him fourth before I, uh, not fourth, I bat him anywhere over Rendon. I'll give him that. But likely for me, if I were had a, an opportunity to make this lineup, here's where it'd be different. I would have, Drury batting fourth, Ohapi batting fifth. Ohapi and Drury are six seven, which I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. I think we're putting too much stock in Rendon and too much stock in Ward. So again, uh, to finish out Ron's lineup, Ward fifth, Drury sixth, Ohapi seventh, Adele slash Hicks eight, and Neto nine. So where I agree in this lineup is number one spot with Renifo Moniak, number two with Sean Well, number three with Trout, and then I agree with Adele Hicks and Neto. There's a, a four through seven that I don't uh, I don't like because the Todd Fox lineup would be Renifo, Sean Well, Trout. I would go with Drury, who led the team in home runs, I believe, or, or second on a, on a team with home runs, had a real productive season. Should have been an all-star. You put Drury at four to protect Trout because Drury's shown that he's very, uh, that he's more than capable of knocking in runs, uh, doubles. He was one of our best hitters, runners in scoring position. It makes no sense putting him at six. So you bat him fourth, and then you put a guy who the Angels as an organization, the fan base for the Angels, The commentators and many people around the league believe that Ohapi is the catcher of the future for the Angels for some time to come. He's our Will Smith, okay, for for the Dodgers, not the one that slaps Chris Rock. But Ohapi is a guy that I would bat fifth. Or you could even say you could even give him a lot more responsibility and have him fourth. Now, I, I saw Drury hit fourth many times last season, did production. I say give him the benefit of the doubt first, take a little bit of pressure off Ohapi, and have him fifth. That would be my starting five right there. And then I would go Ward six, and then Rendon seven, and then I would have either Adele or Hicks bat eighth. I love the Neto at nine because he's going to flip the lineup. And I do believe with a jackass Thames not there, the lineup can be so much better because they'll be focused on getting hits. And I do like Neto as a guy who will go back to his roots, 
take the Shauna Will approach and start getting hits instead of driving the ball every fucking time. Relax and just wait for the bats to come. You don't need that added pressure. And I think his defense will come along. I think Neto's going to have a nice bounce back season because last season he he burst onto the scene, looked great, and then just too much pressure, too much in love with a home run. A lot of that was coaching. I think getting back to the basics for this lineup as it is constructed right now is going to be a positive thing. There could be a couple batters that get added. Who knows? We've seen a couple sign that are going to be spring training projects who could make the roster and, you know, your Sanus of the world or whatever. But that's disappointing to me in a way because, you know, we, we could have brought the band back together and I'm not going to harp on it anymore. Moving on they're lo- They're gone. But I will say this. We'll have a segment on my post game show and, We'll have a segment during the season on the podcast show where we check in on our girlfriends, our ex-girlfriends, basically. And that, that's going to be our Otanis. That's going to be our Urshelas. That's going to be our Moustakases. We're going to just just peek on them a little bit and check the box score and see what they're doing and and maybe get a little jealous and maybe be like, well, you know, if they were on our team tonight, we could have used those two hits because, you know, we lost by a run or that Otani three-run homer would have been great tonight. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll kind of rub it in our own faces there in a bit. You know how you do when you're jealous. But it's one of those things where, again, it, it'll be a distraction from the shit owner that we're going to have to put up with. And a lot of people have said, well, you guys focus too much on the negative or you focus too much on Artie Moreno. The negative cloud is there because of him, number one. And number two, some people say, well, you know, you got he doesn't really say too much. And when he does, it's like it's giving you material for a while. And it's true. But the thing is, he doesn't give the material that gives us hope. There is no hope. There's nope with him. And you can have the PP, which is propaganda prime minister, uh, Roger Lodge out there pumping up this franchise and probably saying, oh, I can't wait to see our fearless leader, Artie Moreno, who just gave me a new contract, by the way. Roger Lodge has been renewed, and that went under the radar. Do you know, do you know how much Roger Lodge makes? Roger Lodge makes now $107,000 a year to do a shitty radio what three hour drive time show i think it is or four hours and it's mostly filler a lot of commercials and then a lot of stupid segments that are repeated like he literally has something where he he says uh with a, one of his producers a spanish broadcaster he he gives the name of the spanish broadcaster station and they go on with with the the rolling of the r for 45 seconds that's 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 airtime sponsors pay for that it's pathetic and they wonder why they've lost so much ratings they wonder why nobody else wants the job and they wonder why everyone goes to podcast even if we're we're not the most popular angels podcast by far but we get a hell of a lot probably more listeners than they do or close to what they get with our dog and pony show because it's shit what he he offers the reason why i bring that up is roger lodge he makes $107,000 a year to do that show <clears throat> compared to a WNBA player where the base salary for a regular player who actually plays games, they only make, I think it is 65 or 67,000 is their total. So he makes more than a WNBA player. Granted, he works more as far as like year round and everything, but does he the debate there is does the WNBA entertain you more than Roger Lodge? And you know, if you know me, I am not a fan of the WNBA. I rather watch paint dry. However, however, (laughs) if you give me the option of being entertained by those lovely ladies of basketball or Roger Lodge, and I have to listen to him for a whole year or endure a season of the WNBA and the playoffs and their finals. Give me the WNBA, baby. Give me the WNBA. And that's saying something. If you know me is I am so against that league, but damn it. If it's against Roger Lodge, whether he talks angels or not, which often he doesn't, 
I will take the beautiful ladies or horses, whatever you want to call them, of the WNBA any day. So, yeah, you got that. I just had to throw that out there. That's one Angel's tidbit right there. Uh, don't at me. I know a lot of people are probably going to hate me for the uh, WNBA uh, comments, but uh, hey, it is what it is. It's it's a uh, it, it's my my opinion. My opinion, not the not the hey. I should have put a disclaimer that says this take right here is nothing that represents Halos in the infield. No, nah, just kidding. No, the Halos in the infield is in full force. We are going to be hitting it out of the ballpark on the daily, especially when the season starts. We're already ramping up and getting. You know, our practice in right now on the daily podcast, uh, but wait till the season starts. We got so much more content to come. Uh, you know, you got Catella Chronicles on the side that's going to be doing shows with Randy and 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 uh, our boy Dominique. Uh, you, you've got them pumping the Angels and the Ducks at the same time. Uh, you've got us right here doing the Angels stuff with all our people that we have. The uh, James Squared's got their show. It's going to be weekly. You got a cup of Joe with Halo Joe. You got Robert chiming in. Uh, you're going to have Andrew, maybe. He's our tech guy. He comes in every now and then. You got me and Fernando. Uh, so, I mean, we we got a lot of content, dude. So, and a lot of people that are, are diehard Angel fans that have been around this team as much as you have that have been through the good and we are suffering through the bad currently, but God damn it. The day this turns around the euphoria that this franchise and this fan base will have to be excited. I mean, the euphoria that will show because we're going to be so happy and because the frustration will hopefully be gone or maybe we win despite Artie Moreno, you know, and we could boo him at a championship or boo him during a playoff run. I know one guy that I'm going to boo before I get out of here, and that is one Anthony Rendon. Anytime that mf -er comes up to plate, I don't care if it's a key situation in the game. I don't care. You know, again, he's got to win me back as much as he should win you back. So my, my take on that is what I said with Fernando on the last show. If he has a great season, it's only good for me and you. The team will be better, will play better, will win more. If he's being the asshole he's been since he's been here, ain't going to help us. He's dead weight like he's always been. Do I want him to be good? Absolutely. So until he turns it around, he's got to win me back. So if he starts off April and he's batting 300 and, you know, he's got like three home runs, but like 15 RBIs and, you know, he's not making errors and he looks like he actually wants to play or at least he's taking it like a job and it's kind of serious to him. I may start to turn around a little bit and he continues that play into May. Maybe, you know, he's not getting injured or he's taking a day off here and there to keep himself good. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm turning my frown upside down and I'm giving him a golf clap. He gets to the all-star break and he doesn't have to be an all-star. He doesn't have to be in the running for the comeback player of the year, but if he's staying consistent wherever he's at in the lineup and he's doing his thing, I, by that time, I'm going to start cheering for him. And I don't think it's a wrong thing to say. I mean, America and every, you know, and baseball fans will give you a second, third, fourth, fifth chance as douchey as you've been. So I, I do want best case scenario for Rendon, but as of now he's ass, you know, like don't refer to him as Rendon. It's a Rendon or ass. That's what he is. So he's on a prove it contract for me. So that being said, in the comments, if you agree or disagree with any of my takes, let me know. Same thing we'll do with any other podcast we got showing up. And again, check us out. Check out Catella Chronicles. Check out One Jets Pod with Randy. Uh, he's doing mock drafts already for the next season. Check that out if you're into it. I got to catch up on my rookie football. Uh, but baseball season, he's going to be hitting it hard too. Catella Chronicles as well. We're going to be hitting it hard, like I said. And uh, look for big things to come from this channel and others. So for Todd Fox and everybody on the Halos in the infield, it's almost time for baseball. See you.